iOS 15 introduced a new UI kit button system that will help you get these Apple style looking buttons that you see behind me. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to use that system both programmatically and in storyboard. Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. All right, here I am in the UI kit starter project. As you can see, I just have a simple button on the screen that says learn more. Uh, back to the code to walk through it real quick. I kept my constraints separate, add button constraints, because constraints have nothing to do with this video. Uh, but configure the button. This is where the, the magic happens. So this style we get here on our simulator, right? This Apple looking button. That's why I chose this, right? Where we're, we're setting the title, we're setting the background color, setting the title color, and then giving it a corner radius. Well, a big purpose of these buttons, and I'll be talking about the pros and cons, you know, throughout the video, uh, is it gives you these Apple style looking buttons for relatively low effort and it's super nice. The main thing this introduces is a configuration on buttons. So I'm just going to comment out this old way so you can still see that. But first we need that configuration that I talked about. So I'll do my button.configuration equals. Okay. Now here's where we can pick the style. I'll do dot and you can see we get, you know, filled gray, plain tinted like these buttons you saw in the introduction. Well, let's start with gray and we'll give it a title, my button.configuration of, well, real quick. So I'll do dot title uh, equals, we'll say learn more. We're just gonna kind of recreate the button we had uh, here. But the big thing to remember is down here in my, own, in my commented code, as you can see, we are setting properties on the button itself. With this new system, we're setting properties on the configuration. So that's the big difference and the main thing to remember. And in a second, you'll see the flexibility of this uh, as I can quickly change things to get totally different looking buttons. So let's run this now to see our new gray style. And there you go, that's the default blue, that's the gray background. But you see, I didn't set corner radius, I didn't do anything like that. Just by setting the configuration, we get a lot of that stuff for free, but we can customize, right? So let's say I do wanna change that foreground color, and I like this style here. So my button, configuration dot foreground, base foreground color, I'm sorry, equals, we'll do dot system, pink. Now when I run it, you'll see this style of button. So by changing the foreground color, that changes the text. And I really like this gray background colored word style for buttons but that'll change any images you have as well. Speaking of images, that's pretty easy to set too. So my button.configuration.image, right? And then that's the UI image. So UI image, and we're gonna do a system name, right? Because we want uh, SF symbols, right? If you have your own custom image, you just do .name. We want system name for the SF symbols, and I'm gonna do book.fill. I just know that's the uh, SF symbol. So now when I run it, uh, and I'm building this slowly, and then we're gonna change the style a lot in a little bit, but cool. Because I set the foreground color as system pink, now my button is there. But you'll notice that's a little cramped, right? I don't, at least to me, it feels cramped. So I can add some padding. My button.configuration.image padding. You also see image placement. We're gonna do that next. So image padding, I will say six and run it again and check that out. Man, I really miss SwiftUI with those hot live previews. But there you go. That padding uh, looks a lot better. Now, before I move on to placement, let's start adjusting this style. We've just been working with this gray style. But now that I have this button, I can change the configuration. So we'll do dot, and then let's do dot filled. That is the Apple style button we had before. But I set my foreground color to system pink. So that means my font's gonna be pink. Well, here I wanna set my background color to pink. My button dot configuration dot base background color equals dot system pink. And then I wanna change my foreground color to dot white. Right, and then this will give us the look and feel that we had before. There you go, as you can see. Now let's go to my favorite style of button, tinted. So I'll do dot tinted. And then now I do want my background color and foreground color to be the same color, because you'll see the style here. I'll run it uh, so you can see before I start talking about it. You get this nice tinted style, and I really think these shine on dark mode. And the great thing about these is the contrast ratio is always good. For example, right, if we had, let's do yellow, right? We'll do yellow for the color instead of system pink. And normally, you know, a yellow uh, background with a white letters, like you wouldn't be able to see those white letters. But now even on a yellow button, the contrast is still there. That's why I like these tinted buttons and I really think they shine in dark mode as well. Now let's play around a little bit more. We can do that image placement, right? You saw that my button.configuration.image placement and you can do dot leading, trailing, top, bottom. You saw we were on the leading where the button's on the left. Obviously trailing would be on the other side. Let's mess around with top and like really, you know, structure our button differently. So instead of a long button, let's have a square button. Let's do like 80 by 80. I'm changing my constraints down here to change the size of it because I'm putting the image on top and the words below it. So it needs to be more of a, a square. So again, made it a square, put the image placement to the top. Now let's run it and see what our button looks like. And again, you can play around with this and, and tweak. 
Okay, learn more looks kind of weird because it's two uh, words. Let's just try learn. And I think this button will kind of be uh, a lot better looking. Yeah, like that kind of button. But you can see how you can easily play around with this, these styles. Once you get this configuration set up, super easy to tweak. All right, let's go back uh, to our uh, button and I'll show you one more thing to where uh, you can have subtitles in your buttons. And now subtitles are pretty easy as well here. So we do my button.configuration.subtitle equals it's fun to learn. And then we'll go back to uh, leading for the image placement, right? And you'll see this subtitle button. So again, with these button configurations, you can get images, subtitles, multi-line buttons. Uh, it's again, very easy to tweak and customize how you like it. And then again, like I mentioned, let's say we did want to go back to uh, gray after we tweak that. But with gray, make sure you change the background or comment out the background color because that will override the gray. But now again, if you want this gray style button, we already have it all set up and you get this nice gray look. Again, I really like this look as well. Now, maybe you want the capsule look, or maybe you want to tweak your corner radius. You can do that as well. Uh, below image placement, my button, I'm just kind of putting these anywhere, by the way, dot corner style equals, and we'll do dot. They have built in uh, dynamic, that adjusts the dynamic type, fixed, large, small, medium. That's the uh, amount of corner radius, or you can do capsule, right? Which will give you, as I'm sure you're familiar, this capsule looking button, as you see here, built right in as a corner style. Now, let me show you something real quick before we move on to the storyboard. I'm gonna option click into configuration, click on open developer documentation, uh, click on configuration here and now scroll down. These are all the properties you can change, right? Like I was playing around with a few of the common ones. I'll link to this documentation in the description. Feel free to check it out. Check out some of these properties, play around with them, customize it all you want. But like I said, uh, I really like these button styles and uh, I just think they're, they're cool, easy to customize, easy to change on the fly. Of course, you could, you know, abstract this away into a custom button class. That way you just change it in that class and then all your button updates, you know, that's a, a different tutorial. But before we go, let me show it to you on storyboard, right? Cause we did all this programmatically, but if I go to storyboard, right? We have a blank storyboard. I zoomed in a little bit too much. Okay, so we have a blank storyboard. If I do command shift L to pull up the object library, you can see here on the left, like I have, well, just in case my face is covering it, you know, we have gray button, tinted button, filled button. They already have these like objects here, right? So I'll do uh, tinted button, drop that on here. Cool, I already got that. Now, if I open up the right pane, you see you're up in the upper right, style tinted. Well, I can change it style gray. And you'll notice the gray uh, style changed the gray. But over here in the right panel is all of those attributes that we just did programmatically, right? Here's the title. So I'll say, Scribble, subtitle, just type it in here. It's fun, alignment, foreground color, background. So we'll do foreground, you know, we'll get that uh, system pink color again. And then the image, right? The cool thing about the image is SF symbols are just built right in. Programmatically, I had to like search for it and like type it in, in code. Well, here I can just, you know, search for it here. We'll say scribble, there we go. The scribble dot variable. You see, I got my padding here. I can uh, adjust the padding, five, six. Cool, you see, just like that in Storyboard, I have a, a cool looking button. And again, all of those properties I showed in the documentation are here in the inspector on the right. And you can just kind of play around with this as well. So that's it in Storyboard. That's the new UI kit button system. I think it's really cool. I think it's awesome that we can create these Apple looking buttons. Of course, if you want a crazy custom button, probably gonna have to do it the old way. But if you like your buttons to feel like they fit into the an, an Apple app, an iOS app, I think this is the way to go from here on out. And if you're here learning about buttons, because every app has buttons, you probably need a website to showcase that app, whether it's an iOS developer portfolio or a product website, you know, for that app. And that brings me to today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to get that iOS developer portfolio or that app website up and running very quickly. Now I know as developers, we want to build it ourselves because we can do it. But remember, there's an opportunity cost to your time. And I don't know about you, I would rather be building my app than spending time building and maintaining a website, worrying about all the different screen sizes from the iMac to the phone to the iPad, all the different browser compatibilities. Like it's a lot of time to build and maintain a website. So I recommend letting Squarespace take that completely off your plate. They have all kinds of beautiful themes to help you make it look great. They handle all the SEO and the analytics for you. So when you're ready to start building that website, go to squarespace.com. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Sean Allen to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. All right, that's the new UI kit button system. Hope you enjoyed learning about it both programmatically and in storyboard, and we'll see you in the next video.